Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to do ocular examination, which will be helpful in our ophthalmology practicals as well as post and examinations. So first of all, we will be doing the examination of head posture. So for head posture, we will look at the chin of the patient and then we will check the posture of the head because in the squint patient there will be tilting of the head. Now in this patient you can see the forehead position is straight. Secondly we will do the examination of forehead and facial symmetry. So for forehead we will be checking the forehead of the patient. So first of all we will be checking for the wrinkles. So in this patient you can see there are no wrinkles which means that he is not having any issue. If there is increased wrinkling as in the case of the ptosis patient there is increased amount of wrinkling in the forehead. And for the second, for facial symmetry, you can see the symmetry of this patient is bilateral, which means the both of the sides of the face is symmetrical, which means there is no uh, problem with this patient. In facial, like Bell's palsy, there the facial symmetry will be not be similar to each other. In third, we will be doing examination of eyebrows. In eyebrows, we will be doing first about the level of the eyebrows. So in this patient you can see the level of eyebrows are at the same level in both the eyebrows the level is same okay if the patient have one third degeneration of the cilia of this hairs of the eyebrows which means which is present in lepris if the level of the eyebrows are not similar so in ptosis we can see this condition so in fourth we will be examining there will be examination of eyelids so in eyelids we have to check the margins of the eyelids like in this patient the upper eyelid should touch the one sixth part of the iris and in lower the lower eyelid should touch the limbus or just touch the limbus of the iris now in second that is a movement we will tell the patient to close the eyes open the eyes and with that we have to observe that the pupil just show downward movement with the eyelid. The normal movement of eyelid is 12 to 16 per minute. Next, we will do the conditions of the skin. We will tell the patient to close the eyes and we evaluate the eyelids for any warts, for any chalazion or any nodule over the eyelids. Four, we will go for the lid margins. So, here are the lid margins. If the lid margins are attached or there is an inward movement, it is known as endoparic tussarotum. Endotropium, ectropium. Inward turbulence. Now, we will examine lacrimal apparatus. So, in lacrimal apparatus, there is the upper puncta, the lower puncta, and the sac. So, first for observing the upper puncta, we have to open the eyelids and we will see the upper puncta over there. Then for seeing lower puncta, we will just do this thing and there will be lower puncta. Now, for lacrimal apparatus, we will see the skin changes around the eye on the nasal cavity over here and swelling as well. If there is a swelling and redness in this area, we will try to do regurgitation test for it. So, in regurgitation test, we will gently take a thumb and we will press press this area for 10, 5 to 10 seconds and if there is the movement of fluid from punctums to outside of the eye, it will be positive regurgitation test. Now, we will examine the eyeball. So, for examination of the eyeball, we will first see the superior orbital fissure which is over here, the line joining it and the inferior orbital fissure. Then we will join this line. The line touches should be touch the cornea. Please open your eyes. Okay. So this line joining superior and inferior should touch the just touch the cornea. And in other eye also we will do the same. The superior orbital, the inferior orbital and the stick which will be just joining the cornea. Now we will examine the visual axis. So in visual axis, we will tell the patient to focus on a particular object and we will rotate the object to another position and then we will tell the patient to see to that object after the move. Now, if the movement is there of eyeballs are similar and with time it will be uh, normal eye. 
and if there is not the person may be suffering from squint so now this is our object and or we will the switch okay so this will be our object and we will tell the patient to see over here patient see over here and we will change the position to over here and now the eyeballs the movement of eyeballs are same so we will consider it as a normal visual axis now next we will go for the size of the eyeball the size of the eyeball is determined by the ultrasonography or the a scan last which is the movement of the eyeballs in movements of the eyeball we will to the rotation of the object in h shape like this we will tell the patient for one eye to close his one eye and now we will tell the patient to see at this object we tell the patient go here above down down then back to here over here over here which is h shape so this is the examination of movements of the eyeball now we will examine the conjunctiva so first in the conjunctiva we will examine for a bulbar conjunctiva so in bulbar conjunctiva we will take the index finger and will just tell the patient to see downwards and will check the upper bulbar conjunctiva for the lower bulbar conjunctiva we will tell the patient to see up and will retract this lower lid downwards and we will see the bulbar conjunctiva next in palpebral conjunctiva first we will do the lower so over here you can see this is lower palpebral conjunctiva which is inside the lower eyelid for checking for the examination of upper eyelid palpebral conjunctiva there are two methods one uh, one hand method and the second one is two hand method so in one hand method we will tell the patient to see downwards and we lift the and we will see or we will see directly the conjunctiva from here so this is for the one hand technique and in second method that is two hand technique now in two hand technique we will take the help of one ear bud okay then we will place the ear bud just close the eyes okay we will place it the hole on the upper eyelid and with the second hand we will retract the eyelid on the head and like this we will be checking the upper palpebral conjunctiva now we will see the congestions of vessels in conjunctiva so if there are congestions of vessels in superficial layer which means it is a sign of conjunctivitis and if the congestions of the vessels will be deep so it is a sign for keratitis now we will examine the sclera in sclera first of all we will see the discoloration of the sclera that is color of the sclera so here of the eyes see over there so this part of the eye is known as sclera the white the normal color of the sclera is white in jaundice the sclera becomes yellowish in osteoarthritis deformance it becomes bluish then second we will go for inflammation if there is any inflammation there will be the congestions of the vessels in this sclera see over there the sclera this will be reddish in case of inflammation now the third point is we will check for the staphyloma so in staphyloma there will be the bulging out of the scleral tissue because of the uvl tissue so over here there will be bulging is seen it is called as staphyloma the fourth point fourth and the lastly we will check the traumatic perforation in sclera in this we will tell the patient just to rotate the eyes rotate the eye see over down over there and we will check the whole eye for any traumatic perforations now we will do the examination of cornea so for cornea we will see for corneal ulcers corneal nodules so in this patient we will check the cornea cornea is a layer just over the pupil and iris so we will check the cornea for any ulcers or nodules and for detailed history or the detailed examination of cornea we will be needing slit like slit, uh, slit lamp examination will be done for cornea now to check the anterior chamber and the depth if the anterior chamber is shallow or deep for this we need a torch right and we have to illuminate this torch from the temporal side okay so first we will tell the patient to fix the gaze in a point so fix the gaze over here and 
we will just illuminate it from the side and if there is the shadow on the half portion of the iris then it is a sign for shallower anterior chamber so shallower anterior chamber is seen in hypermetropia and subluxation of the lens now this test is done in both the eyes so along with this we will also examine if there is any content in the anterior chamber like pus it's, it is in present in hypophyon and tumor cells in pseudo hypophyon and blood in femur hypophyon now we will examine the iris so in iris we will first check the color of the pupil and the pattern of the pupil okay so for color of the pupil we have to illuminate with a torch so we will check the patients the color of the color of the iris then we will check the pattern all around so in this you can see the pattern is similar all around next there are two conditions in which the color of the iris is different so it is heterochromia iridium so in heterochromia iridium the iris of both the other eyes are different the color of the uh, iris is different in both the eyes and in hyper and in heterochromia iridis the one quarter of the single pupil is of two different colors as you can see in the image now we will check the synecy in the patient so synecy is basically the addition of the iris with the other part of the eye so in this also we will illuminate the light from this side and we'll check if there any is, is there any we will tell the patient to just check the iris from all the directions if there is any addition or not then we will check for the nodules as well is present in the iris or not and the last we will check for the coloboma coloboma is just the uh, in uh, the perforation or the extra perforation of the uh, iris it can be congenital or surgical now in examination of pupil we will first do the examination of pupil in this we will go for the number of the pupils so we will check the patient's eye and we will check the total number of pupil in some patient there are more than two two or more than two pupils in this condition is known as polyporia polyporia now number after number we will go for the size the size of pupil is around 3 to 4 mm which will be illuminated from this side as the only in this side okay now the third point which is the location the location of the pupil is centrally placed inside the iris it is centrally placed so pupil is circular and at last we will check the color of course pupil is a hole so will uh, the color which will be seen in this is of the lens or what is inside the pupil it will show if the person the, uh, the if the color of the pupil is jet black which means the patient is not having any lens this condition is known as aphasia and in above these conditions the color of the pupil is different now we will examine the pupillary reactions so total there are three types of pupillary reaction so first one is direct second one is consensual and the third one is the swinging so first in the direct reflex we will tell the patient to close his one eye please close his one eye and after closing we will take this light and we will just hit this light into his eye and we will check if the pupil dilate or constricts so normally the pupil will constrict so in this patient the pupil constricts we will repeat this test in both eyes now we will tell the patient for the consensual light reflex we will tell the patient to take his hand and we will keep it on the nose please do the test Keep it on the nose. Now we will examine the patient. We will throw this light in one eye and we'll check the response in the other eye. So we have to stand it and then we'll take this and from here I will do it from here and we'll check. So in this I can see that. So in this I can see that there is constriction of the pupil in this side as well as that side. Now the third test. which is also called the swinging test so in this swinging test we will first uh, we will throw the light in one eye we'll swing the the same light in the other eye and then to the this side then that eye so in this patient we will tell the patient to see over here okay 
Now we will leave the torch on and we will just start this. So the normal uh, reflex is normal in this patient. If the person like normally the pupils will constrict, but in Marcus gun pupil there will be the dilation of the eye just after the exam, just after throwing the light in the other eye and just taking it from the same eye. There will be dilation of the eye. It is seen in Marcus gun pupil. Now we will examine the lens. So for the lens, if the lens is swollen or not, we will check for the shadow of the iris. So for the checking the shadow of the iris, we will take this and illuminate see they over here and illuminate it from the side and we will check the shadow. If their shadow is present, the shadow will be present on the nasal side and we are illuminating it on the temporal side. Okay. And if there is shadow in the anterior chamber or the iris, so which means that there, that there is a swollen lens is present. Next, second we will check the color of the pupil as well for a fakey condition. So color of is also determined in the slit line microscopy better but we will try to see over here. Now, now we will examine the intraocular pressure by digital tonometry. So in this we have to take two index finger and we will place the index. We will tell the patient to close his eyes, close his eyes. Okay. Then we will tell this fingers on here and we will slightly pressurize on it over here. So in both the direction we will do the pressure. So, and in this condition if the eyeball seems to be very hard which means there is increase in the intraocular pressure and if the, eye, the eyeball is like the bag full of water then which is soft in nature which means that there is decrease in the intraocular pressure. And at the end I will thank Shubham my friend for letting us performing the ocular examination which will be beneficial for everyone of you.